In this video, we're going to be discussing what happened to the Godzilla from the 2014 movie. And we say what happened to that Godzilla because if you guys remember, at the very beginning of the movie, there was the fossil of another creature that was identical to Godzilla. Dr. Sarazawa even makes a point to say that it's not him when his assistant asks him, if it's a Godzilla. More or less that's what she was asking because when they refer to him, they're talking about the G-Man. Now we know that the Motos are parasitic and we know that they found the little cocoon things inside of that creature, but it wasn't really implicitly explained why or how the creature itself died. Well, the wonderful thing about Godzilla Aftershock is that it explains all of those things that you always wanted the answer to. The Mutos, how the Godzilla died, all of it. It also humbles us and helps us to realize just how easy Godzilla could die if faced with the right opponent. So now we're going to delve into the story, or at least a part of it, from Godzilla Aftershock. The fallen Godzilla that we see in Godzilla 2014, the movie, was actually called Dagon. Of course, they didn't actually say this in the movie, but Monarch designates his species as 5146 Adam. As a summary from the wiki says, in Godzilla Aftershock, the graphic novel, it's revealed that the ancient skeleton was once revered as a god by multiple ancient people which encountered him, as the biblical Dagon by the Phoenicians and as the lightning god Raijin by the Japanese. While modern day scholars believe the Mesopotamian and Canaanite deity known as Dagon was actually associated with grain and agriculture, his depiction in Godzilla Aftershock follows the more common interpretation in popular culture that Dagon was worshipped as a sea god, which makes sense because, you know, Godzilla's kind mostly spends their time in the sea. But this is due to the association of his name with a Canaanite word for fish. The fish god depiction of Dagon was perhaps the most popularized by his appearance in the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Now, because he looks almost identical to Godzilla, he is thought to be the same species, which would make sense. We've always asked whether or not Godzilla had other family members or others like him. And since the popular opinion, or not the popular opinion, but what they found is that Godzilla and his friends are ancient species of creatures from a long time ago, it stands to reason that there would have been more of them. We first learn about him in Godzilla 2014, when in 1999, the Philippine miners found that there was this huge pocket of radiation under the ground. When everyone started digging to find out what it was because they probably thought it was uranium, then that's when the whole area collapsed into a massive underground cavern, and that's what contained the skeleton of this titan who they saw as another Godzilla. It is inside the skeleton's ribcage where they discover the two parasitic spores. One had split open and the other one was dormant. The one that split open was the female that dragged her way up to the sea. And then the last one, the one that was still dormant, turned out to be the male Muto. There's a cute little love story for the Mutos attached in the card for the video if you guys want to go and have a listen to that after. So having found these parasitic spores inside this poor thing's skeleton, everyone made the connection that whatever laid the eggs inside this thing was responsible for its death. This creature seems identical to Godzilla, so it makes sense that he would have all the same features and abilities as Godzilla as well. With Godzilla being so hard to kill, how the hell did this thing end up dying? Well, the graphic novel Aftershock uncovers it all. When Dr. Chen and Emma Russell went before a panel of monarch scientists in the southern Philippines, they explained that the cavern in which they found that fossilized Godzilla dude is actually some kind of gravesite for titans. The caverns themselves are said not to be natural formations. There were actually records of this creature's life, and he fell at the hands or jaws of the creature called Jinshin Mushi, a mythical insect-like creature. Sound familiar? Jinshin Mushi, otherwise known as the earthquake beetle, the dragon beetle, the abomination, is actually titanus Jinshin Mushi the Muto, more specifically Muto Prime, or the daddy or mommy of the two Mutos that terrorize San Francisco. So yeah, those Mutos were like brother and sister. I mean, they basically were though. So here's what went down. Raijin, or the Godzilla creature, was found with twin puncture marks in his abdomen. This was according to the tablets they found that showed several of the humans surrounding their god, otherwise known as Dagon, the Godzilla creature who they found uh, whose skeleton they found in the cavern. Those two puncture marks were caused by the spear-tipped ovipositors from Jinshin Mushi, or Muto Prime. These tusk-like things are 
commonly what he uses in his battles. Here's the really sad part, and it makes sense that this would be the easiest way to kill something like Godzilla. Sarazawa, knowing this, deduced that the Muto Prime incubated its young inside of Dagon's body. Maybe it used its ovipositors to place the babies inside there, just like a parasite, just like some wasps even do. After he did that, she did that, whatever it is, Dagon was infected. It's kind of like Alien, the Xenomorphs, how they do it. Freaking raping people's bodies and placing things inside them so they can burst out later. Instead of these things bursting out though, the parasitic eggs actually fed on the internal nuclear energy furnace from within this poor Godzilla creature. And this made him weak until he finally died. Somehow his death created this cavern. Maybe he crawled up in it to die, maybe he fell down and it caved in with him in it. Whatever the case is, the Muto killed this poor creature in one of the easiest ways you could think of. Something feeding on its nuclear energy from within it until it dies. So essentially, the Godzilla creatures are like the sun, and the Mutos are like black holes that just keep feeding on the stars until there's none of them left. This is really sad, and I could imagine how heartbreaking it must have been for those people that worship this thing, that they was basically their Godzilla back in the day, and see him slowly losing his energy, day by day, dying slowly as the parasites within him start sucking away his life force. To be honest, even though I do feel sorry for the Mutos, I could totally understand why Godzilla saw them as such a threat. It wasn't just because these creatures were in his territory and cramping his style, but they were a direct danger to him. Not just because they would reproduce and compete for his energy source, but they could in fact kill him. They got big enough that they could hurt him and inject their parasites with him. He could have fallen or have succumbed to the same fate that this unfortunate other Godzilla did. So that's how Dagon, AKA Adam, AKA Raijin died from the 2014 movie. And now watching the movie back and seeing his corpse skeleton there, that just makes me have a whole bunch of new emotions and feelings for this poor thing. That could have been Godzilla lying there. And do you imagine maybe it is possible that this creature knew Godzilla? I mean, these creatures seem very solitary because they're very large but the ocean is also a very vast place. And if there's a pocket under the earth, they probably go there to socialize as well if the situation arises. It's possible even that this Godzilla might have been a female. And now Godzilla is so freaking pissed because of it. And he's like, you know what? This freaking sucks. I lost someone that I love. It could be an ancestor. It could be his father. It could be his mother because I did mention that it is much older. So, while he could have an older female, chances are if they say a creature is much older and they make a point to say that in a movie, it must mean that it's an ancestor or a parent. If Godzilla saw his mother or father fighting this thing and then fall prey to it, which consequently caused them to die, a horrendously agonizing and harrowing death, that would give him enough motivation to really hate those Mutos. I mean, think about it. Muto Prime, yeah, he ends up killing it or whatever in Aftershock, which would have been before King of the Monsters took place. But before he fights Muto Prime, the 2014 events in San Francisco take place. And the only way Godzilla knows to get back at that Muto or Muto Prime for killing his ancestor, I'm pretty sure one of his family members that he was very close with, is to kill her children. So as soon as those things reared their heads, he was like, okay, bitch, it's on. You wanna know what it feels like to lose a loved one? I'm gonna show you right now. And he waits till the female is pregnant and they mate and then he kills all of them. So that might have been his way at getting revenge. And then the Muto Prime, the parent Muto, realizes what Godzilla did. And she's like, oh, hell no. And that's when everything just, I mean, come on now. Like, like I love these POVs. And this is what goes through my head when I'm writing them. Because they would have this whole conversation. And now that we have more information about this, it's going to make writing these POVs so much more fun. Oh my gosh. I'm working on so many of them right now. And I'm just doing little bits and pieces of them. So there's going to be a lot of them coming out over the course of a few months. So I hope you guys enjoy them. But that is how the Godzilla from 2014 movie, or at least a skeleton that we saw, that that's how it died. That's what happened to it. The freaking Muto Prime killed it by sticking its two sticks inside of its body. 
And that sounds weird, but that's what happened. In a weird way, it's like it impregnated it and the pregnancy killed it. That's okay, we're not gonna get into that. But what do you think about this revelation, guys? You should really buy the Aftershock graphic novel. It's wonderful. I'm waiting for a digital copy to come out and I've seen only little bits and pieces of it, but I actually wanna wait so I can read it in its entirety because it looks really, really good. I would want something like that in my, um, in my inventory, my catalog, whatever you call it, but I want a digital copy. So uh, let us know in the comments what you think about this, any other suggestions for hypothetical scenarios or movies, biggest questions that you may have, leave it in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. This has been Altiori, you ask, we answer.